Hello everyone, this is Crota giving you a shoutcast and a game between Agatha and Lordo here on Bright and Dark. Lordo spawning as the blue orc over here at what I'll call the center, what is that? The bottom left hand side of the map. If you guys know Bright and Dark, you know that it's not really in a corner. So don't really know what o'clock position it is. But then again, let's just say he's spawning right here. Meanwhile, Agatha is spawning as the red human over here on the top right hand side of the map, not the far corner. And I am very interested to see how games unfold on a map like Bright and Dark. We saw some games yesterday, some very, very entertaining games between Yumiko and WFZ. These games, I believe, were taken from um, a best of one Korean qualifier. So I'm just going to call them showcase matches because, well, I have no better name for them. Now, human versus orc i am expecting an archmage versus a blade master reason why blade master is such a strong orc hero oh wow okay lordo is completely throwing me for a loop and i love this about lordo lordo is one of the orc players that does have a number of different um, a, a number of different strategies so you quite never know what to expect from him and with this farseer i am expecting maybe a farseer torrin chieftain combination farseer torrin chieftain combination is generally um stronger than say farseer um farseer shadow hunter just because um you don't want two very very squishy heroes the torrin chieftain adding a little bit more um oomph and tankiness to, to your army and also, Farseer with Chain Lightning coupled with the Torrent Chieftain's Shockwave or Stomp can deal a lot of damage. Now, you are going to be very, very mana limited in that particular strategy as we are seeing, the, yes, the, the Drain Eye back over here, the Drain Eye Seer. And yes, we are going to be seeing a Fell Beast now picked up, a very, very common, um, a common unit on this particular map. And one of the things I like about Bright and Dark is that bright and dark is one of those maps where it's not completely mirrored the mercenaries at this particular creep camp are different than the mercenaries at this creep camp so you can kind of tell where units were possibly picked up we are going to see a fell beast very very low on hit points as the archmage does pick up a potion of greater mana farseer now coming in does have spirit wolves and will it find something to kill this is going to be potentially bad bad news as agatha going to be losing perhaps one if not two peasants here it looks like yes one peasant will get taken down and how many more peasants will get taken down here as the spirit wolves may just be resummoned inside the fight yes the spirit wolves are going to be able to make it inside here as they are now trying to run into the back all right, the Spirit Wolves. Oh, getting pushed here. Beautiful surround by Agatha to make sure that the Spirit Wolves cannot um, continue their pressure harassment. That was uh, one of those strategies or one of those maneuvers that is very, very simple to look at, but very difficult to execute in terms of micro. Yes, if you guys have to know, we are watching Korean players and the, the micro is just simply amazing so far in what some of the games that we've seen. All right, Agatha does also have a new Fell Beast. I don't know if that was actually healed all the way back up or, oh yeah, it looks like it was healed all the way back up as opposed to being trained up again. Uh, we are going to see the Grunt now turn around. The Fell Beast does back off here. The Drain Knight Disciple is relatively low on hit points as we now see that the Archmage and the Farseer are doing a little bit of a duel as well. The Grunt now needs to perhaps head back home, but the Spirit Wolves are relatively fast and do give that Archmage a bit of a run for its money there. All right, that Grunt actually choking up his own Farseer a bit as the Grunt now perhaps should be heading back home. All right, let's see what will be picked up here. Why even head to the tavern? You're not going to pick up a tavern hero just quite yet. As we are seeing a tech to tier 2 on both, or at least one side, but not a tech 2 here. Agatha, without a tech to tier 2, may be trying to set up an extra expansion somewhere, but this is going to be rather difficult for him as we now once again see Lordo place down another set of spirit wolves to replace the ones that he didn't want to have give experience. All right. Archmage sitting at level 2 does have boots of speed and will he be able to head behind this mercant or behind this demonic gate and do a bit more creeping there are a lot of creeps on this map as we are looking at militia coming into the bottom side here all right this is a 3344 four creep camp farseer now pushing in and what the lordo could do here in this best of one series is perhaps do a quick tech 
to um, Wind Riders. And with a very, very fast tech to Wind Riders, oh, that one Militia actually taking quite a beating there. As we now see the Draenei Disciple still coming in. Dark Ranger now coming in as well. Oh my goodness, the Dark Ranger of Lordo is going to be uh, popping up skeletal minions all over the place. This is actually the worst possible thing for Agatha, as Agatha is supplying a lot of Militia. With all of these militia here and all of these peasants here, he has to be extremely careful. But with two Draenei Disciples, he's able to keep up that army relatively alive as the Farseer now tries to get away. The Dark Ranger, um, Dark Ranger, Farseer combination. I have not seen that in a bit. And that Dark, or uh, I don't think I've ever seen a Farseer, Dark Ranger combination. The Farseer first is already odd enough. Farseer, Dark Ranger together. It is just a very, very unusual combination. We are going to be going into Raiders, though. It is not going to be Wind Riders as I originally expected, as we are still seeing the Dark Ranger just lobbing arrows back and forth. We do see that um, there is a Sentry warded down. The Raider has now come into play level 3 on the Archmage. That is going to be a rather painful fight. As we have two level 1 heroes versus a level 3, level 2 water elementals will be dealing a tremendous amount of damage. As you can see that the uh, Farseer is using some healing salves to try to get back up to full hit points. Quickly, quickly taking a bit of damage there. As we're now seeing the speed scroll used, Farseer now trying to get away, get a little bit of distance. Use another healing salve most likely. There it goes. And now what is going to be happening next? This Dark Ranger Farseer combination of relatively, um, relatively low hit point group of units, and there isn't even that many units out on the field. It looks as though it is going to be Shaman, Bloodlusted Raiders. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. I cannot. I do not remember the last time I saw Bloodlust come in from a Shaman, let alone a Farseer Dark Ranger. And for everything, I hope that this game is entertaining for you guys as I can't predict what's going to be happening. All right, one low hit point grunt will get taken down. There it goes. We can see Shaman have come in as well. Shaman do have Lightning Shield and Purge, which may shut down many of the Water Elementals. We can see coming back over here, the, I believe the Adept training has completed. We can see the Squirrel Town Portal now coming in. Are we going to see a Purge onto that? Yes, we do. A Purge onto that Water Elemental there. And another Purge going to be giving a lot of mana or a lot of experience to the Farce here, but... You got to remember that the Shaman is relatively low on mana as well. It needs to get another Shaman out here on the fight to join in here and deal a bit of damage. Water Elementals are relatively slow as the Shaman is still waiting to get more and more mana. Here you go. There's the fight continuing once again. The Shaman has to be very, very careful. Low on hit points. There is a Purge as the Water Elemental now taking a bit of damage. It does deal magic damage from the Shaman, so it will deal extra damage there as we now see a quick level 2 on the Farseer, but not after a couple of Raiders get taken down as well. We can see that Lordo is going to be losing one of his Spirit Wolves here as we now see a Voodoo Lounge being re replaced. Alright, there is that um, Footman getting taken down. There is another Water Elemental, and my goodness... I have ne I, this is just a strange combination of units, shaman, shamans and raiders. This is not for bloodlust. This is for purge, and this is a rather unorthodox strategy. All right, one poor fell beast finally gets ensnared. It will get taken down, but the problem is now we need to see healing. Are we actually going to see witch doctors? That would make me laugh oh so hard if we actually saw some witch doctors come into play. All right, there we go. Voodoo Lounge is up. We can see that there are two, three shamans on the field healing salves, or four shamans on the field healing salves ready to go. We perhaps we will see some lightning shields. Purge is also effective against the Dark Ranger, as the Dark Ranger is generally a hit and run hero, and Purge does slow down that unit. Lordo now attempting to do a tower rush. Agatha, does he spot this? As the Raiders do have medium armor, they do take reduced damage, as we now see that the Arcane Vault is getting pressured. Um, do we have pillage? No, we do not. No pillage means that and they're just suffering a lot of damage here for no other reason than to suffer damage. As we see, a couple of these peasants will get taken down. Oh, there it goes. There is another Dark Minion there as the Watchtower is about to be completed. One tower up against five, though. That is not going to work out well as we now see another push into the main. Kodo Beast is going to eat... Oh, trying to eat that Troll Berserker. Is it going to be able to do so as one Orc Burrow does get taken down? There is a Chomp there. Oh... 
What is it doing? Oh, the peon does a beautiful block to now start digesting a troll berserker. Raiders now pushing in a beautiful ensnare onto the ogre mauler, making it difficult for the archmage to get out. We can still see some more fights coming in. Oh, this poor, poor raider will get taken down. No, it looks like the shamans are going to get taken down first as we now see more purges coming in. There goes a raider. There is an ensnare as another water elemental could get purged out of existence. Are we going to see it get taken down? Um, there goes the ogre mauler. There goes another unit there, but I don't know if he's actually gaining experience. What is going down? You can see now the Draenei Disciple taking a bit of damage. It will get taken down pretty quickly there as we should see a bit more healing. Now we can see that there is one um, watchtower here getting in a bit of damage onto the arcane vault. It's going to get some easy shots off onto some peasants as well. We can see spiked barricades onto the watchtower, making it rather difficult to engage with footmen. All right, Archmage perhaps going to pick up another troll. Shadow Priest, yes. Agatha using mass tier one. Um, mass tier one and now picking up a mountain king in or with mercenaries in order to try to put come out ahead meanwhile the Kodo beast finishes digesting one level three now on the farce here and level three now on the dark ranger this is very very bad news oh the raider down to 21 hit points it looks like it will get taken down there it goes are we gonna perhaps see purge onto the archmage as nope there goes the troll shadow priest as the farseer and the dark ranger once again will be heading across the map dark ranger relatively um, good on mana for now, but how long will this all hold up? You can now see the Demolisher joining in on the fight here, just lobbing attacks against the Town Hall. The Demolisher, however, cannot engage well against this one um, against this one Archmage as the Demolisher may just try to attack ground right here. If it attacks the ground right there, it should do a bit of, do a bit of do a bit of splash damage, excuse me, as the Mountain King now joins in on the fight. All right, Voidwalker has joined in on the fight as well. It looks as what Immolation or Aura on a Draenei Dark Slayer really abusing this side of Bright and Dark by using many of the mercenaries. Uh, Immolation Aura is going to be a problem. Shaman now in a bit of first here is in a bit of a problem here. Down to 144 speed scroll now trying to be used. Will it be able to get away in time? It looks like it will. Meanwhile, there's Silence coming in, and the Farseer has to be extremely careful in this next fight. He is now down to 89 hit points. Mountain King is very, very low. It looks as though, yes, Purge is going to be used as well. Mountain King gets taken down as the Dark Ranger continuing this push. A beautiful game here as the Demolisher now taken down. Farseer, uh, sorry, not, um, Fell Beast gets taken down there. But all of these Arcane Towers making those Skeletal Minions pretty much useless at this point. All right, Kodo Beast needs to back off. Cannot take a lot of piercing damage at all. It is an unarmored unit dealing 200% damage, I think, or at least 150 as the Voidwalker now trying to come in as well. No repairing on the Arcane Vault yet. No Spoke Too Soon Peasant now trying to come in. There's the Ensnare. And now the Archmage is pretty much useless because it cannot, I repeat, cannot summon Water Elementals. With this many um, Shaman out on the field, that Water Elemental is going to get instantly taken down. And Agatha is in trouble. Agatha now forced to retreat here. Um, I believe these two players are actually on the same team. I'm surprised that they don't practice against each other this much. But this is such an entertaining game to watch, I must admit. As Agatha going to be losing this scout farm here and perhaps losing his one advantage in the game all right looks like a demolisher here was taken down demolisher is still landing a lot of attacks there goes another scout farm do we have um i can't tell if we have um a pillage or not as none of the raiders are currently attacking buildings meanwhile in comes the attack there all right there goes one building or there okay let's see Yes, it looks like there is pillage. Anyways, it's coming back around. Um, units are pushing through. There's the purge onto that water elemental. Purging water elementals left and right as chain lightning coming in to finish off some of the casters as well. So far, level 4 on the Dark Ranger, level 4 on the Farseer. They are pushing in very heavily. Um, Spirit Wolves now pushing in again as the Archmage is about to hit level 5. Will it hit level 5 here? I do believe so. As the, Yes, so oh, good guys, so close. Yes, level 5 now on the Archmage. Level 3 Water Elementals. And the only benefit there is that it takes an additional purge to take it down. Otherwise, um, there's another purge there. Oh, is it? does it have enough mana? Yes, it does. Shaman has enough mana there. Hello, Arya. My daughter really wants to see what's happening here. Yes, this is Warcraft 3, not Starcraft 2. As the skeletal minions are now backing off. <laughs> Alright, daddy daddy's casting right now. 
You wanna see? Okay, you can see. Hold on. Whoa. Whoa. All right, if I'm a little bit further from the mic, I apologize, but I'm screaming right over my daughter's head now. As we can see, some mercenaries will be picked up at the mercenary camp off over here. Arya, don't touch the microphone. Um, back over here, we can now see Priest. Sorceress now coming in as well. You can see double purge on the water elemental. It is very, very slow after that purge. But now we see slow has been put across the entire orc army. That is going to be a bit of a problem. So much slow as the Archmage at level 5 will have plenty of mana for the rest of this caster army here. Here we go. There's the engagement. Skeletal minions pushing through all once again. It looks as though the ensnares trying to take down the casters in the backfield shaman Pushing through as well. It looks like the water elemental is gonna get purged once again Another purge could, could come down there It is as the mountain king does get in a thunderclap units are very very slow here All of these uh, priests are now trying to run back away It looks like they're gonna get taken down as the spell breakers are now joining on the fight a beautiful thunderclap here Slowing down all of these shaman as the water elementals are still being brought into play All right, the shaman needs Need to get away. Spellbreakers are going to start finishing them off. And this is starting to be a beautiful turnaround for Agatha. As Agatha realizes that with an Archmage, he still needs to go into casters. Now that we finally see a caster army, Agatha's um, composition is just that much stronger. As the Archmage does have po a potion of lesser invulnerability or, in or just a full invulnerability. As Demolishers are now trying to push in as well. Demolisher walking straight past the army. This is not a good fight for it. Demolisher needs to get away. It does deal a lot of damage, but the Spellbreakers are getting in there. Squirrel Town Portal now on the Archmage as the Demolisher is going to get away. And there, there it goes. All the units will be backing off. But where are they going to be going to? You can see that the um, the town hall here has been destroyed as we are now still pushing through very, very heavily. All right, the demolishers are now trying to take down some of the buildings here. Peasants, free experience now coming in. And a free skeletal minion army is going to start popping up. There you go as the Arcane Sanctum will get taken down. Unfortunately, Agatha has lost his one true advantage in this game in that additional expansion as the archmage and the mountain king are currently trapped behind some scout for behind some farms so far the engagement still trying to come in here spellbreakers are at zero zero mountain king does have a lot excuse me Arya, don't touch that um mountain king now still trying to push in don't touch the microphone as the uh, farseer now gets to level five Level 5, level 5, still continuing to push around here. Um, level 5 on the Dark Ranger, I do believe that Orc has the advantage now that the economic advantage has been neutralized. Kodo Beast uh, finally getting taken, um, almost getting taken down there, down to 219 as a new Water Elemental coming back in. All right, we do have Shadow Wolves now coming in, trying to focus down individual targets. This one Kodo Beast will get taken down here in just a second. All it needs is one more pierce. There it goes as a Spellbreaker appears behind enemy lines. Uh, Shaman still trying to push in as all those units are now backing off. Agatha is in a bit of trouble. He is trying to stay alive on one base only while his opponent has a huge, a huge, huge um, level advantage. Two level five heroes. And what is this? Was that Howl of Terror? Um, how did Howl of Terror come into play? Um, I don't know. Uh, apparently there must have been some other some other um, mercenary that gives Howl of Terror as we now see an Arcane Sanctum being built off to the left. The Keep taking a bit of damage. The Keep taking a bit of damage here, but it could be repaired pretty easily, pretty quickly as the Spirit Wolves now once again try to engage. All right, Spellbreakers now taking a bit of damage from those Spirit Wolves. That 42-point critical strike, normal damage, really, really causing problems as the Demolishers are still just lobbing attacks at that keep. The keep now down to 555 hit points. It looks like it will get destroyed here as the Archmage now trying to run away, gets ensnared. No real way to stay alive. Purge onto the Archmage two, three times as the Archmage barely survives down to 19 hit points. It looks like the attack does come in and that is the GG. Lordo taking this game. Amazingly. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Um, I'm sure you guys can tell I have something else to do. I would love to do a recap. Actually, I'll do a recap real fast. Nope. Gotta go. Bye.